This has been one of the hardest sculptures I've done to date. I spent over five weeks making an intricate end grain design, only to chop it up and try and carve it into something truly one of a kind. Oh, and I almost cut off my finger in the process. This journey starts out picking up wood at the lumber yard, and I mean a lot of it. I spent around 2500 bucks for all this, and I always tend to buy way more than I need because one of my biggest annoyances in a project is starting it and then halfway through running out of lumber. In my last video I asked you guys to help me decide what to carve next between a buffalo, a horse, and a bull. Overwhelmingly you guys chose the bull. Well, except for Rukab Nepal 4551 here who wanted a peacock. So I'm going to be carving a bull, and if you're one of those people that voted for a bull in the previous video, let me know by commenting bullseye, and I will be sure to respond. I purchased plans for this design from Feldhaus Family Woodworks. Their plans gave me not only step-by-step -step instructions on how to make this, but also a very detailed video, which helped out a ton. I'll leave a link in my description so you can check out their plans for yourself. Thank you, Feldhaus Family Woodworks, for making this sculpture possible. This sculpture is another one of my passion projects, meaning it's not a commissioned piece. It's something I've just wanted to do for a really long time. The sculpture will be listed for sale over on my website and I will put a link in the description if you are interested. I'm excited about this thing right here. This is gonna be a game changer for the shop. This is the Laguna PX20 planer and it is a huge step up from my little 12 inch tabletop planer. I was previously limited on how large I could make my sculptures due to the planer size. This planer basically doubles that, so I can't wait to go bigger and dream up new sculptures in the future. It also features this digital readout which is a game changer for making accurate measurements. Once all my lumber was milled up, it's time to start making veneers, and this design calls for a lot of them. I ended up doling my bandsaw blade, so I opened up a new one, of course, without gloves, and this happened. I should have taken this as a sign to be more safe and use more caution. But I didn't. This is the very next day on my last veneer of the entire project. Don't use scrap wood laying around as a push stick, right? Please don't. Be safe. Be safe. Use a real push stick. Lesson learned. I ended up getting five stitches and after the x-ray came back, I was relieved when there was no sign of bone or ligament damage. You almost had to call me nubby. Or nubs. Would you call me nubby or nubs? Probably nubs. I think nubs has a good ring to it. <laughs> all right, let's go back to the scene of the crime. There's just blood spatter all over the tools behind the bandsaw. I feel like I'm in a CSI episode just analyzing blood spatter, but it's everywhere. <laughs> this is pretty crazy. Let's figure out how this happened. Un believable. This is not even an inch left in my final cut over the past two days of milling straight. Everything is completely milled. This is my last cut on my last veneer for the entire project. That is unbelievable. So let's talk about what happened. This is what happened. This was my quote unquote push stick. I knew it. I knew that this was a stupid push stick and that, you know, I should have done something better. I knew it, but this was easy. It was on, it was either there or on the floor. And I was too damn lazy to make a real push stick. That just goes to show you do not be lazy about safety. So let's talk about what happened. I'm using this and as it gets to the end of the cut, my force, I'm pushing this against the fence and through. 
as you can see here, it snapped. When that snapped, I did it with my right hand, so let's get nubby in here. When that snapped, this went right here. See that section? There's about a two inch section of blade that's, the, that's not guarded. I mean, I am very lucky that this thing was on here. Otherwise my whole hand probably would have been cut off. Not cut off, but you know, somewhat. Um, so yeah, that is what happened. Let's go ahead and make us a proper push stick. When designing a push stick, I just want something that obviously keeps my hands away from the blade, but something that I could also push evenly against the fence and through the blade. And while I do a bandsaw one, I might as well do a table saw one too, because as you can see, my table saw one is very janky, and again, something I just made on the fly without any thought put into it. Both of these took me only around 20 minutes to make and should last me years to come. Why I didn't do this earlier, I have no idea. Actually, I do know. I was lazy. I'm a really lazy bum when it comes to shop safety. So, if you take anything away, just don't do what I do. Be safe. And now to finish where I left off. And I'm done. Literally, that was the last cut out of all of this. A one second cut that changed my finger forever. Unbelievable. Now I just need to sand down all my veneers and this Supermax drum sander makes quick work of it. Let's get ready for our very first glue up. You probably don't know this, but I am not precise at all. Half the time I just wing it and skip measuring altogether. These plans made me bring out the calipers for basically the first time ever in the shop and take precise measurements throughout the entire process. It's definitely a bit outside my comfort zone, but I'm starting to learn how to be more accurate with my cuts, which will end up improving my work over the long run. The majority of this design is to make a glue up, resaw it at an angle, and then repeat the process. I think there are over six separate cuts and glue ups. I kind of speed through it on the edits of this video, but this took a solid two and a half weeks to complete. Now we are finally on the home stretch, and there are only four more cuts to make and two more glue ups. I can't wait to see this pattern take shape. And right here I'm super excited because this is the very first time I get to see a partial reveal of this pattern. I basically just flip every other board over and the pattern should match up. Check it out. It is looking really good. Now here's why I'm so pumped about this new planer. Previously I would have had to do this in two separate sections and then re-glue them up. It would have been near impossible for that pattern to match up on the glue up because of the different heights from planing them separately. Now I get to do this in one pass and the pattern will perfectly match up no matter what because it's all the exact same thickness. Thank you. 
And now for the moment I've been waiting for. Let's check out the finished pattern. I am pumped. It matches up so well and all I have to do is nail one more glue up and then we are ready to start carving. I just can't help myself. I need to see what this grain looks like with a little water pop and check it out. This thing is so cool. I absolutely love it. Now, you guys didn't ask for it, but I'm gonna show you anyway. It's been around three weeks since my accident. Stitches came out around six days ago, and this thing is looking pretty good. In fact, so good that I'm gonna spend the entire day on the bandsaw making pretty sketchy cuts. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that this is about time when I start to bust out the chainsaw. This one, I'm cutting the bulk of the material off with the bandsaw because this block is perfectly square and also thin enough to cut with the bandsaw's capacity. This is definitely a better way of doing it, but it can only be done on smaller pieces like this. I have all these off cuts and they are beautiful. I just have no idea what I'm gonna do with them because they're all different weird shapes and sizes. So if you have any good ideas on what I could do with them, please let me know down in the comments. I also have these three bigger boards that I'm going to do something pretty cool with uh, a little later on in this video, so stay tuned. Now I've done pretty much all I can do on the bandsaw and now it's time to start power carving. I use these burrs and discs from Cutsall and they make a variety of different grits and shapes to get into all the different areas. Carving is all about taking a small amount of material off at a time, then checking reference images often and redrawing your cut lines. I always have to tell myself, slow and steady, otherwise I tend to get carried away and end up taking off too much material, which is exactly what I did in a little bit. Remember when I said I took off too much material? Well, it seems I took off two very important chunks of wood on this bowl and castrated them by accident. And speaking of castration, I am honored to have this video sponsored by a company who combats castration with innovative products like the Lawnmower 5.0. I present to you Manscaped. Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra has dual skin safe blade heads, an upgraded trimmer blade, and an interchangeable foil blade and I've taken it upon myself to demonstrate its capabilities. Manscaped is undoubtedly leading the charge on men's grooming because of their top-notch quality and unmatched value. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra has two interchangeable blade heads that glide gently over your skin, capturing even the finest of hairs. We're gonna put that to the test. And check out those LEDs. Manscaped has you covered in even the darkest of areas. And let's not forget the best part, they are completely waterproof. Head over to manscaped.com and get your hands on the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra today. 
Use my code BMS and you'll get 20% off and free shipping. Avoid castration. Again, that's code BMS for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. All right, now let's give this bull back his manhood. I'm unbelievably lucky that this was a solid walnut piece and didn't have any pattern to match up. So basically I just took some cutoffs and cut it off and matched the grain as best I could. I love using this total boat formant at epoxy for quick and permanent fixes. One trick I like doing is I'll mix up some sawdust for a seamless glue line. This works unbelievably well for hiding the joints. And in no time, this bull got back his crown jewels and it looks like they were there from the beginning. Pretty seamless transition if I do say so myself. All right, now let's get back to carving this thing. All right, here we are after a lot of refinement, but there's still a long ways to go. All right, let me show you guys where I'm at. In order to finish this head and really proportion out the head, I need to see what the horns are gonna look like on this, and I'm running into a couple of issues. Come on, focus, focus, focus. So this is almost a 45 degree angle turn, and Turning this brass, this is half inch brass, 45 degrees is gonna be near impossible. So unfortunately, I think brass is completely out of the question, which sucks because I think it could look so cool. And it's something that I've, I've really envisioned from this sculpture from the start, but I just, I don't think there's any way that I'm gonna be able to bend this into a 45, which brings me to my next dilemma. If I am gonna do this out of wood, what wood do I do it out of? I have quite a few different options here. I can use this maple here that is the light wood that I used in the pattern. I have some beautiful curly or quilted white oak. I have this white oak burl here with a ton of character. And then I also have this Osage orange. And please correct me if I'm saying that wrong. I have no idea how to say it properly. Osage, o Osage orange. I don't know, it's pretty cool stuff. After water popping the wood, I really didn't like any of the options here. And then I remembered that I may have some curly maple up in my rack. So I basically went digging and finally pulled out this beautiful piece of curly maple. Check out those curls, absolutely beautiful. And I love that it's maple, which is also used in the pattern, so this should match perfectly on the sculpture. Now that the horns are done, I have the terrifying task of drilling into this bull's head and hopefully aligning the horns accurately. This is always a difficult and scary part to do, but sometimes you just gotta go for it. I had a little wiggle room, which helped, and the horns went in and lined up really well.
Now that the horns are done and installed, it's time to give this bull some matching curly maple shoes. Crazy how much a little color change can affect the overall look of the sculpture. I just love how these little hooves turned out and I think it really adds to the overall aesthetic. Now all we have left is the finer details of this bowl and then we are ready for some sanding and finishing. I picked up this solid piece of half inch steel at the scrapyard and I'm hoping to turn this into the base. I contemplated making a wooden base for this sculpture and even adding the pattern design into the pedestal, but I just thought it would look too busy with the intricate wooden pattern and I didn't really want wood on wood. I think this steel will actually give this sculpture a really cool overall look and feel. This plate has been sitting outside for who knows how long, and it's developed some corrosion pitting, which I'm planning on using to my advantage. I'm gonna try and polish this up, but not all the way. I wanna leave the pitting and then accentuate it with some cold bluing, which you'll see here in a second. By cold bluing and then sanding, I enhance all the low spots, which creates this unique design for the pitting. I really like this look, but I know it's not for everyone. I'm interested in what you guys think. Let me know down below. Now all we have left to do is put on some finish and then attach it to the pedestal. All right, I just put on the first coat of finish and I noticed there are a couple areas that I didn't sand all the way down. And I have really two options here. I can sand this down now and make all of the imperfections that I see disappear, or I can leave it. And you might be wondering, why would you leave an imperfection that you can see a flaw in this sculpture? Well, let me tell you, and I would love to hear what you guys think about this. You know, I think there's gonna be a time when everything is made by a machine. This sculpture today can be made by a machine and be absolutely flawless. It would be very, very expensive to do, um, but this can be done now. And I just think as these CNC's and machines and programs continue to evolve, I think sculptures like this, one of a kind sculptures, will be able to be created flawlessly. So my thinking behind keeping these flaws is this shows that this sculpture was 100% handmade, hand carved. You can see the carving strokes in a couple of different areas, which are flaws, but I'm almost leaning towards keeping these because 10, 20, 50 years from now, when everything's made by a machine, Whoever owns this is going to know this was built by hand. This was hand carved. And I think that's actually going to add a lot of value to this over the long run. This was all hard work, handmade, and hand finished. So for that reason, I'm actually going to keep, I feel like I'm on Shark Tank. So for that reason, 
I'm gonna keep these flaws in this sculpture, but I'm super interested. What do you guys think? Let me know. Let's get back to it. It was a little tricky figuring out how to attach this because there are really only two connection points on this sculpture. I epoxied a steel dowel into the two hooves and then epoxied that into the metal base and this seems to be pretty secure and I'm pretty happy with it. Remember those offcuts from the beginning of this video? I'm going to turn them into end grain cutting boards. I will have four total. The main one will be given to whoever purchases this sculpture. Again, I will have a link to this in the description. And then two of them will be for sale over on my website. Again, link in the description. And the fourth one will be given away to one of you guys. All you have to do in order to win is comment what you want to see me carve next with the hashtag BM Sculptures next to it. And be a subscriber to my channel. That's it. You guys really helped me out in the last video by telling me you wanted to see a bull most, and that's why this video is possible. So I'm super excited to hear what you guys want to see me do next. And remember, it doesn't have to be an animal. I know I've typically only done animals, but I'm definitely down to switch things up. So give me your best shot. What do you want to see next? Oh, and I forgot to give you a finger update. It's been over five weeks since my injury. The finger's healing up really nicely. Thank you everybody for the well wishes, much appreciated. All right guys, the two cutting boards for sale will be listed on my website as well as this bowl sculpture, which will be for sale as well as the cutting board that will be accompanying that. I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you like this finished sculpture as much as I do. Let's not keep you any longer. Let's check this out.